because he has more space. He has more room to roam. And he's so skilled, he can do anything. So he can kind of pick his spots um, when and where to, to do whatever he wants to do, whether it's shoot or drive or pass. So there's more room out there for him. Um, they're very comfortable. They've, they've been playing at a high level, and they've got a good, good groove going. So that's Steve Kerr talking about the toughest matchup in the game. LeBron James, we're getting ready for a rematch of the NBA Finals. Cavs in town getting ready for game one against the NBA champion Golden State Warriors. Kerry Keating has a little help for us here. We're trying to get a little primer on what you do with the Cavs and what they do well. First of all, with this guy, how do you game plan for, for a physique like this? Well, you heard Steve say, and we're going to hear a common theme throughout this, Jim, three ball, that the Cavs are shooting very well. He's not their best three-point shooter. Matter of fact, he's one of the two worst percentage-wise that they have. But like Steve said, he's going to have the freedom to do whatever he wants to do with the ball. And he's going to have the ball in the middle of the floor with the floor spread a lot. All right, let's see what this guy does. A lot of it is on pick and roll action. This one, he starts off wing pick and roll, gets, him, uh, gets himself a little bit of space here off the pick and roll. And we're going to stop it right here. Well, the first thing you see is the pick comes from their point guard in Irving. So they're trying to get some mismatches. Even though they don't get the mismatch that they want Lowry on James, they do get the big man back on him. But look when he comes back on him, all the space that James has here. There's movement. There's some false action. The corners are starting to get filled, which is important in the corner three, the shortest one. But it spaces the floor. And now LeBron's got a chance to do whatever he wants against Biombo here. And here's what he chooses to do when he's got a bigger guy on him and they give him some space he can hit that shot. That's not the only thing he can do. That was off wing action. Now he's bringing it up, and he'll start the offense, and he'll do it from out front where he gets a pick, and then here's what he does. Well, this is the danger now. You're worried about the three ball with your... your oh, oh, that's okay. Oh, sorry You're about good. that. You're good. Don't worried smart. about the three ball here with Kevin, and what does he do? He gets downhill. If they had help from Kevin, he's going to kick that out for three, but that, that's where LeBron's really dangerous, getting downhill. All right, so when he starts going to the hoop, uh, hit my action right there. Perfect. There you go. You're good, and... We're going to swing it through. We're working. All right, exactly. The two-man two game. game. <laughs> now you've got Kyrie Irving, who you didn't have last year to work with him. Yeah. How do these two work together? Well, Kyrie is just as dangerous as Westbrook, although not as dynamic physically and maybe not as reckless, seemingly reckless. He is a good finisher at the rim, and he's got an ability, Jim, to put up 30, 40-point games just like anyone else in the league they have to worry about at that point guard spot. All right, so we know LeBron's going to handle the ball, but it's this guy, Kyrie Irving, who can also start the offense here. High screen, Tristan Thompson. He's going to play with it a little bit before he's able to figure it out. And now once he does, that's when he gets kind of dangerous here. All right, we're going to get to our pause. Well, here's what he's, here's what he's doing. He's probing, he's probing, he's probing this whole area. And again, the corner three is filled by LeBron. You've got a rebounder down low in Thompson. If it happens to come back, you've got a shooter in J.R. Smith. The ball's in the middle of the lane, and all eyes are on Irving. He's going to pick and pick, he's going to pick at a party to get into the rim if there's no help, or in most cases, the draw and kick for the open three. And let's see what he chooses to do in this circumstance here. As he's got the eyes on him, finds the open man out of the corner, and that leads to an open three stroke and that's something that this Cleveland Cavaliers team can do here again we're gonna give you another action here and this one is an entry into the high post area and then we can see what he does individually the first thing that happens is you have this horn set where you have an NBA horn set two team two people on the high post normally two two people out guarding and having uh, teams guard them respecting the corner three the entry into LeBron here and the cut through makes the defense respect it and now you're trying to keep Kyrie from getting the ball this is where LeBron is really most dangerous Jim probably the most underrated passer of his generation maybe just as good a passer he's got a chance to draw and kick right here when Kyrie cuts to hit Kevin or hit a pocket pass to Kyrie. Let's see what happens. All right, let's see what he chooses to do as he makes his cut to the hoop. And in traffic, yeah. good finisher. That's too. a tough pass, and Kyrie's as good a finisher as you're going to find at the rim in the NBA. All right, so now we move. Uh, let's move it along here because then we can just focus on Kyrie Irving. That was Kyrie working closely with LeBron James. Sometimes LeBron's going to need a break. It won't be very often. 
How does this guy do with trying to control what the Cavs do with no LeBron available? Well, again, when you heard Steve say when LeBron's in, he's going to have the ball in his hands a lot, whether he's leading the break or finishing the break or just playing one-on-one -on -one up top. This guy's a dynamic ball handler, much in the mold of Chris Paul, of Steph Curry, can play in traffic against multiple defenders. When you're drawing multiple defenders and now you also have shooters and a couple guys rolling to the rim, it's going to be dangerous and possibly a trouble, trouble spot for the Warriors. All right, this will come off uh, miss and now they're out and moving and in transition you got a lot of different options here again not russell westbrook and that he's going to blow by you but he does have the speed in the downhill speed a great outlet off the miss right here and now DeRozan has to make a decision do i step in and stop kyrie as he goes by joseph here because i got to respect jefferson shooting 44 percent from three and here's another three ball lurking in the back side in case the opposite defender drops down what does kyrie decide to do take advantage of the gap that DeRozan gives him gets himself to the rim, free money with the end one because he's going to make that free throw. Again, with the good finish skills. And now we'll see another uh, set uh, in which, you know, you see what happens here when he gets players converging on. Well, again, this is what we talked about. He's got the ability to navigate this. We're all familiar out here with Steph's ability to dribble through some traffic right here. Kevin's starting to spot up. Kyrie's going to try to find a spot. He's got three defenders on him. And just in case, LeBron's warming up behind right there to get that three ball if he flips it back. But they play the two-man game with Kevin, and you'll see Patterson fall asleep here and give up a wide open shot All right, in the end of Kyrie. Here's how it plays out. Love a good passer in his own right. A wide open player who can bury the three. I can sympathize with that assistant coach he's, going crazy. He's going crazy on that side? Is that what he was it's doing? It's probably there? his scout. How important is three point shooting going to be for the Cavaliers? We know how good the Warriors are at shooting the threes. We pointed out, and everyone knows the Splash Brothers. Does Cleveland have a version of this that can get rolling at any time? Well, let's go back to the last series. You saw the huge discrepancy in what the three ball was able to do to help the Warriors versus the Thunder. And the Thunder really missed guys that can knock down shots. Durant will take them. Russell will take them. Cavs, all but two guys shooting over 40%. The team almost shooting 45%. The two worst guys, Della Vadova, maybe your best passer, and LeBron, your best player, are going to have the ball in their hands. When they do, you're spreading out the floor with shooters. You're going to see a lot of threes in this series, Jim. All right, let's take a look and see how the Cavs do it. And again, they'll do it off a miss right here. How good is that an opportunity for teams off a miss if they can get out and run? Sometimes your best offense is your defense, and sometimes we refer to that as a shooting turnover because now you're giving the advantage back to the offense, and look what happens. The ball gets pushed up the floor quick. LeBron's in his glory right now. He's got one, two, three, four, five guys looking at him, a trailer. Watch him throw a dime right here, right on the money, right across for an open shot. All right, let's take a look. He sees his options, and you got a wide open guy out of the corner who's shooting at the very well, a three ball, and now let's see it again. Well, here's what we talked about. Shooting turnovers leading to threes. Here's the next best and maybe the best way to get a wide open three. Offensive rebound, spotting up, extra passes. That's a wide open shot, and this is a shot that when it's kicked out, no one's closing out to Kevin, giving him the opportunity to make a shot or make an extra pass. All right, here it goes. And there's the extra pass for an open guy out of the corner, able to knock it down. All right, here we go. Let's see one more time. This one in transition again. Right. Here's, the, here's, the, here's the ability of the Warriors to affect you. Kicking out, taking a layup away, getting an extra three, extra pass, trading two for three. The Cavs can do it just as well as the Warriors can, Jim. All right, best times to get a three. What are they? Transition, obviously, as the Warriors have shown, I think offensive rebounding. We saw rebounding was a big part of the last series. Rebounding going to be a big part of this series. If the, if the Warriors give up offensive rebounds on the missed shots, you're going to see a lot of three balls coming from the Cavs off those offensive How rebounds. How tight can this series be? we got 20 seconds. I think it can be tight because of the players are involved. Obviously, we talked about before the two best players in LeBron and Steph, two teams that are motivated, ready to go. Wouldn't be surprised to see it go six, maybe even seven. It's like going to the lottery. we got a hockey team in a final. We've got a basketball basketball team going back to the finals. Kerry Keating, great job breaking it down. That'll do it for Sports Talk Live. Thanks for watching. Good night, everyone.